the 663rd edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with promo code MMA SGPN to score up to a thousand bucks in bonus cash. And we're also brought to you by Rhythm. Get your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. Hi, Yoda Generinos. Welcome to episode 663. We're almost, we're headed to the number of the beast pretty soon. 663 of the MMA Gambling Podcast. I think I dedicated an episode to Satan already, so I don't know if I can do it again. <laughs> I think I did back in the day. Anyhow, welcome to the episode. Uh, this one is dedicated not to Satan. It's dedicated to Jackson Mihoff. I assume that's his full name. Jackson is the first name. Who uh, who proved once again that gambling retirements are about as... Um, as permanent as he may have retired again though yeah uh, yeah he had a rough night uh he had a good night and then a rough night yeah that's what yeah. happens when you follow gumby on the contender series last night you had a good night and then you had a rough night then you know jackson mihoff you don't have to gamble you can still hang out in the discord with us uh but we, we've seen many uh, people uh retire and get rid of their account and then say hi the next week so uh, we know how it goes thanks for coming to the show i have not retired i'm taco fox a.k.a. Jeff Fox. And we have got our second half of UFC Paris, a.k.a. UFC Fight Night. Moicano versus St. Denis. Yesterday we did eight fights, and Gummy and I could not agree on a lot of them. Uh, we'll see. We predicted we're going to have about five that we sync up, five out of six here. So, um, Which, oh, it'll be interesting if we're right, and if we chose the same fight that we're not going to sync up on. So, uh, let's jump right into it. You people don't want preamble. You want your picks. So, let's bring in the man, the myth, the legend, Daniel Gummy Breathing. Hello. Yeah, I uh, I'm almost guaranteeing I know when we differ. I, oh, I, I, I can gummies. feel, I can feel your vibe on one of these picks. And I know <laughs> I'm on the other side. Yeah, it's he has written down my uh, special plays before and and been <laughs> correct multiple times. He's been correct on my plays before. I've made them on the uh, on the locks, dogs, props, all that stuff. So hey, I already I already have some of your plays for this week. So <laughs> pretty soon we're gonna start looking uh, like each other, like married couples. So it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, I'll start looking like Gumby. So, UFC fight name, Moicano versus St. Denis. As I said yesterday's episode, the co-main event would be a main event on a normal fight night card. So, that means it's a pretty solid uh, fight card. Third fight from the top is pretty, uh, pretty interesting as well. As is uh, one of her favorites and the fourth from the top. So, yeah, this is a pretty solid fight card. Um, but the odds, kind of stinky, at least for the top few fights. Or surprising at the least, maybe not. There's, there's a couple I think are not so bad, you know. Yeah. And we'll, we'll we'll get into the weeds in a second. Yeah, and I was so yeah, I was surprised by the the uh, gap uh, on some of these odds. So, um, but uh, I'm not an expert. I'm uh, guessing the odds like Gumbia. So, who is to say? Before we jump into things, I got to tell you, uh, exciting things are going on at the network. We have legitimate celebrities hosting shows now: Doug Stanhope, Brandon Walsh, and our boss Sean Green. They host the newest podcast on SGPN. Get to the points. Every Thursday before the game, Doug, Brendan, and Sean give out their favorite plays and talk a ton of shit, just like we do. Doug and Brendan are professional comedians. So is Sean. And uh, you may know them from such shows as the Joe Rogan Podcast, the Howard Stern Show, and Comedy Central. Perhaps you've heard of those three three places. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. YouTube, podcast catchers, all that good stuff. Um, check it, check it out. Um, all right. Hopefully uh, they're not... The company's not blowing all the money on those big big name celebrities because uh, Gummy and I need need money too, right? I'm already I'm already the big name celebrity. Am it's I not? true. You are around these parts. You have shirts uh, made. I guess I have a shirt made about me as well. So yes, we're both big time celebrities. It's hard to go outside these days. Um, now we've <laughs> once we once we went to YouTube, it is hard because people recognize me everywhere. Let's get down to the fight card. All right, so noon is the prelims. Is three? Are we going to say three for the main card? Is it? Three. All right, cool. Let's jump into it. Um, a French fighter. Surprised here. Uh, it's all French. Every fight's got at least one French fighter in it. So uh, f- on the main card. We'll start with first Zayam. He would be the French representative in this lightweight fight against Matt Fravola. He would be the American. Three, five minute rounds, 155. And this kicks off our main card. The steamroll on Matt Fravola, 11 and four with one draw. So 11, four and one, we usually say. Four knockouts, three submissions. He's been knocked out three times. Five, four and one in the UFC. 3-1 over his last four, got knocked out in his last fight. 1-0 contender series, 1-0 on World's, in World Series of Fighting. 2014 Pro and May debut. More active landing strikes and better grappling stats than Zayam. And he's outstruck his UFC points by 0.14 strikes per minute, plus 110. 
the smile killer for us as i am no the he's not the smile killer he's just smile killer 15 and 4 five knockouts four submissions he's been knocked out three uh, submitted three times five and two in the ufc He's won three straight and five of six. He's not lost since February 2022. He has multiple regional championships on his. Mantle. Correct the shirt. Sportsgamblepuckets.com slash store. Get sticky. He's fight at welterweight and middleweight. 2014 pro on May debut. Four inches of height. Four inches reach. Seven years younger. Better striking stats than Frivola. He has outstruck his opponents by 0.98 strikes per minute. Minus 125. I'm starting to think this may be the one that we're going to differ on. I'm taking Frizz as I am. Bigger. Younger. Better striker. And we're getting very good odds on him. So uh, give me Zayam. But I think Gumby is a steamroller fan. So let's see. It's steamroller time, my man. Uh, you're 100% right. Uh, I I like Frivola a lot here. And I know we're talking about reach and Zayam is, you know, he's not bad at using that reach either. But, you know, we're talking about a guy who got taken down a bunch of times by Francis Marshall. And and not that I don't like Francis Marshall. You know, I, I think he's got quite a bit of upside. And he actually looked really good in his last fight on short notice. But like Frivola is a better wrestler than that, right? Like I don't, I don't think we're we're splitting the atom by saying that. And then in addition to that, like Matt Frivola knocked out Drew Dober. Do people remember that? Like this is the guy who who one punch KO'd Drew Dober, and somehow we're talking about him as he's like a much worse striker than people. Um, you know, like the power here advantage is is huge for Frivola, and I think he gets in on the inside because anytime. You know, Zayam starts backpedaling. If Zayam does do that, he's going to be in danger of getting taken down. Uh, like, I, I think he's going to have to stand in, in that, like, striking range in order to make sure Frivola doesn't get the takedowns. You know, if he, he starts throwing kicks and try to keep distance, Frivola's going to catch something and get him down. And I think he's going to have a lot harder of a time getting up from, from that Frivola than he did or, uh, Francis Marshall. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like, I think you got to trust the steamroller here. Uh, I, I even think maybe the, the TKO is in play. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I've even already looked it up. I, I think the TKO from Matt Frivola is like 350 right now. Wouldn't be, or uh, no, I take that back. His finish is like 350. His, uh, his TKO was 575, which I think is a great value. So, yeah, give me the steamroller. Oh, maybe, just maybe we'll differ on two fights. You never know. Um, I forgot about that one. I was thinking you would be Zion, but then I'm like, oh yeah, Favola. Favola is your one of your one of your people you, you like to pick. So we shall see. We shall see. Let's move on to the next fight on the card. It's down weight class, featherweight Morgan Cherrier from France, Gabriel Miranda from Brazil, three five minute rounds. Miranda fly, it's a nickname. 17 to 6, one knockout, 16 submissions. He's finished everyone. Uh, he's been knocked out twice. Taking this fight on short notice. One one in the UFC, four one over his last five, one his last five via submission. That was back in September 2023. Was regional champion, used to fight at lightweight, 2012 pro on May debut. Three inches of height, two inches reach, better grappling stats over Cherrier. And he is out, uh, sorry, he's been outstruck by 3.36 strikes per minute in the UFC. Yikes, plus 500. Cherrier, the last pirate, 19, 10, and 1, 11 knockouts, three submissions. Been submitted once, so very durable guy. 30 fights, one been stopped once one one the ufc he's won four or five did lose his last fight was the cage warriors champion in a previous life also multi region championships on his mantle correct the shirt sports pockets.com slash store get sticky 2014 pro on may debut five years younger than miranda better striking stats more active landing strikes uh he has been outstruck though in the ufc by 0.26 strikes per minute minus 649 the name of one of our lotteries up here so he's got the lucky number on him gumby go ahead so first of all you messed up uh terribly on morgan charrier's nickname i uh, messed up yeah yeah you you got to remember his real nickname which is the french solomon renfrew oh yes uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah the return of the french solomon the, renfrew the, the renfrew. return of the french solomon renfrew i'm going gabriel miranda here call oh me crazy god and and feel free to call me crazy on this one i think that he's being you know e even if you don't think he's gonna win this fight I think he's being wildly underrated here. You know, we're, we're talking about a guy who fought up a weight class on five days notice in his debut and like held his own for a round with Benoit St. Denis at lightweight. And then he went into his second fight and he absolutely tooled on Shane Young. You know, like UFC veteran Shane Young lasted less than a minute with this guy because that's how good his takedowns were and that's how good his submission game were. And I'm not saying 
that Morgan Charrier is it better than Shane Young at this point in time? He likely is. But also, like, Miranda's submission game is super slick. You know, th- the only person out there stopping him is Benoit St. Denis, which, you know, like, he looked pretty darn good up until that point. And now, granted, he wasn't winning. I'm not saying he was winning or anything. He just, like, looked like he could he could hang. And, you know, Charrier is a guy who's big, strong, tires a little bit, like, overextends once in a while I, I mean i think miranda just needs the opening here i could see a submission happening but i could also see him just like surprising us on how good he is everywhere you know those stats look bad because he fought benoit saint denis you yeah. know you just mentioned morgan charrier has been outstruck by over two and a half strikes and uh rat or a minute what's his excuse because he didn't fight benoit saint denis yeah um still bigger uh, not bigger, younger, not bigger, smaller, no. <laughs> younger, uh, better striker, uh, not taking the fight on short notice. Uh, I'll take the French Solomon Renfro on, on his return here. So, um, boy, are we going to get it? We thought it, we would uh, agree on everything, but one fight, you really thought I was going to take Miranda here. Come on. No, I thought, thought I would take, take I thought you were going to take Favola though. No. Yeah. I really thought you were a steamroller guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he's good. He's oh, definitely a hard guy to fight. All right. Before we move on, Underdog Fantasy, Gumby is in on the dogs. Uh, he's in on Underdog Fantasy as well. Underdog Fantasy Pick'em is always adding to their awesome menu. They now have first touchdown projections. There are tons of ways to win with NFL, college football, MLB, and yes, MMA and more. The lobby is jam packed with profit boosts and no sweat entries. You can now use specials to boost on all flex entries. Gumby, you have any plays for us? Sure. You mentioned the uh, the the first touchdown goodness uh, over there on Underdog Fantasy, and we've got a Cowboy game on Thursday. That's right, Thursday Cowboys. I'm going to take the higher than on Jake Ferguson's first touchdowns. Uh, obviously set at 0.5 because you could only be one or zero, uh, and I like his one for being the first touchdown in that game. So give me Jake Ferguson's higher than on his uh, first touchdowns projection. All right, here's the important part. Sign up with our code. It's good for you and for us. M-M-A-S-G-P-N. Uh, that way you get to claim your, your special pick and first time deposit offer up to a 1000 bucks in bonus cash. Underdogfancy.com, promo code M-M-A-S-G-P-N. And use Gumby's pick. All right. Hopefully we don't disagree here, but who's to say? The French man in this fight would be Kevin Jussier against the American Brian Battle. Three five-minute rounds at welterweight. I would tell you about Jussier first. Air. Juicy A, 10 and 2, four knockouts, one submission. He's been knocked out once. 2 0 in the UFC. He's won five straight and eight of nine. He has multiple regional championships on his mantle. Correct to the shirt, sportsgamblepockets.com slash store. Get sticky with it. Uh, used to fight up at middleweight. Has outstruck his UFC points by 3.13 strikes per minute. Very impressive. He's an inch taller than battle. He's got better striking and at more active landing strikes than battle. Better striking stats. Uh, better grappling stats as well. And he is at plus 146 on the board. Mr. Battle wants us to call him the butcher. We're going to call him Pooh Bear still. Uh, he's 10 and two with one no contest, three knockouts, five submissions. He's been, uh, has he been finishing a fight? I don't think he no, has. No, been... uh, it was, uh, his loss was uh, Renat Fakhradinov decision. Yeah, right. A five and one with one no contest in the UFC, two and oh with one no contest over his last three, 11 and one with one no contest over his last 13, no contest, last fight. You fight at middleweight. Miss weight last fight, or was the last fight he missed weight at welterweight or two fights ago? He's missed weight at welterweight since he's dropped down there. Uh, two and all in the ultimate fighter and the champion of his season, two inches of reach, a year younger than Juicy He has outstruck his opponents by 0.78 strikes per minute, minus 150. I'm a, still a sucker for, for the Pooh Bear. Um, give me Brian Battle, way better grappler, probably can hang on the feet, but I, I think he could uh, just grapple his way to a victory here. So give me Pooh Bear. I think he brings unique challenges on the feet. Even if you don't want to like straight up say he's the better technical striker, mm-hmm. the dude is so big for being a welterweight. And like we saw what he did to Angelusa. Uh, you know, Angelusa in that last fight, you know, y- you can make the argument that fighters aren't looking for a way out or whatever, but like Angelusa kind of looked like he was looking for a way out in that fight. And like, you know, Pooh Bear was just taking it to him. And and Angelusa hung in there on contender series with Jack Della Maddalena. So I think it's not necessarily here to say that like Brian Battle is a better striker than Jack Dell Medellin. I think that would be kind of a crazy statement, but I think that size in, in him just being a guy who's fought, you know, at, at middleweight and light heavyweight and heavyweight in his career, like he's, he's abnormally big for welterweight and seems to be getting 
a lot better as he gets really dedicated to his fitness. I mean, the guy is is cut now and is looking a lot better with on the mitts. He's looking a lot better when he is in the cage. And to your point, he's still kind of got submission skills that we we often forget about. This is a guy who submitted Andre Petrosky up at middleweight. So, yeah, I'll take Brian Battle here. I, I think he uh, he brings the challenges to Juice and uh, the physicality takes over. I was going to make a joke about you uh, uh, insert Gumby uh, drooling over Brian Battle's body, and you did it for me. I did. You yeah, I got you. Joke? I got you. I mean, um, he's he's cut as hell for a dude who used to be chunky. <laughs> for, for for someone named Pooh Bear, is that why he's not Pooh Bear anymore? I think he just wanted to like sort of shed a moniker that was like you, you know, like that that moniker is because he used to be like a chunky guy, um, yeah. and he used to fight at heavyweight. So like, you know, it, it maybe is. Maybe he thought it wasn't fitting anymore or wasn't yeah. menacing enough. I don't know. Tough. He's Pooh Bear still in our hearts. All right. We just, we agreed on a fight. All right. Um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, will we do, agree on this one? Let's, let's see. Uh, Frenchman in this one, William Gomi, by the way, fight up against Joe Anderson Brito. He is from Brazil. Three, five minute rounds. Tell you about Gomi first. Jaguar. 13 to 2, seven knockouts, one submission. He's been knocked out. Oh, sorry, submitted one time. So durable dude. <clears throat> Three and O oh in the UFC. He's won 11 straight fights. Won his last one via TKO. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, that's right. Won his last one via TKO. He's not lost a fight since November 2016. He's fight at lightweight, multiple regional championships on his mantle. Correct. Get the shirt, sportsgamblepocus.com slash store. Get sticky with it. Uh, he's outstruck his UFC opponents by 1.13 strikes per minute. Four inches height, one inch reach over B2, two years younger. Uh, and he is at plus 240. Two barrel, shark, B2. I think it's an area in Brazil as well. Uh, he Is that right? It might be, but he's also right. uh, like got a lot of like shark merch. Uh, yes. So it's definitely <laughs> after the shark. <laughs> uh, he is 17-3-1, and one, seven knockouts, eight submissions. He's been knocked out once, submitted once, five and one in the UFC. He's won five straight and 15 of 16. All five of those uh, past uh, five wins have come via finish. He's not lost since January 2022. Multiple championships on his mantle. Correct the shirt, sportsgamblepockets.com slash store. Get sticky with it. He's fight down at Bantamweight up at Lightweight. 2013 Pro on May debut. More active lighting strikes than Gomi has outstruck his UFC points by 0.7 strikes per minute, minus 275. My turn? Yep. Uh, I'm Joe Anderson, Bree, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, I, I think, you know, uh, oh, no, was it, did I mess up one again? I might have messed up again. Uh, Ferris Zayim, was he taken down by Francis Marshall, or was that William Gomi? <sighs> was taken down by Francis Marshall? That's right. It was um, William Gomi who was taken down by Francis okay. Marshall. Yep, I, I don't even need to go back and look. I just know it was. Um, he's the one who got taken down by Francis Marshall. Zayim got taken down by somebody else, though. Uh, and now I'm, I'm going to be bugged that I, I can't remember who <laughs> took him down like eight times. Um, you you put the intern on who took Ferris Zayim down all the time. All right. Um, um, yeah, William Gomi, you know, and it's not just the takedowns. Like, Joanna Sabritu hits like a damn truck. And, you know, we kind of saw it in that Jonathan Pierce fight. You know, Britu got taken down, and I thought he was going to get beat up. And I was like, oh, he can't handle this. And then – Pierce taunted him. He stood up and submitted him in a second. Like that's the kind of guy that Joe Anderson Brito is. I don't know why he's getting a step down in competition for William Gomi. It, it seems yeah. like too easy of a line to play. Negative two seventy five is probably not high enough. Give me Joe Anderson Brito here. Yeah, I'm taking him as well. Just, just too dangerous and too wild. It, he's going to be a hard, hard guy to finish. And I will take a. Sh oh, would I take a shark over a jaguar in a fight though? Hmm. Obviously, it depends where it is, right? Yeah, I, th I think it depends on where it is. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in the water, yes. Um, and Ferris I am got taken down by Claudio Puelish. Yeah, I just looked it up. You're right. Nah, you Claudio go. Puelish. Ah. Good job, Gumby. Good job. Screw also, Bafferville is a better wrestler than Claudio Puelish. So just okay. apply there my reasoning before there you go. do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm still there. Still applies. All right. Kill me an event is a middleweight fight. Uh, Nazardin Imamov, he would be the uh, Frenchman. Brendan Allen, the American. Three phone rounds if they need it. Allen, all in. Brendan Allen, <clears throat> get it? Uh, 24 and 5. Five knockouts, 14 submissions. He's been knocked out twice, submitted once. Durable man. Uh, 11 and 2 in the UFC. He's won 7 straight and 9 of 10. Has not lost since December 2021. He's fed down a welterweight up at light heavyweight. One and all contender series. Multiple region championships on his... Mantle. Correct. Get the shirt. Sportsgamblepockets.com slash store. Last time we'll say it this episode. Uh, better grappling stats than Imabov. Has outstruck his UFC opponents by 0.15 strikes per minute. 
plus 180. Emma Bob, 14 to 4 with one no contest, six knockouts, four submissions. He's been submitted once, six and two with one no contest in the UFC. He's won two straight and gone five and one with one no contest over his last seven. One is the last fight via TKL. Used to fight just like Allen, down at welterweight, up at light heavyweight. Regional champion, an inch of height over Allen. Better striking stats, more active landing strikes. Out, outstruck his UFC points by 1.25 strike per minute, minus 210. Call me crazy. I'm taking Br- Brendan Allen here. Just the role the guy's been on. Obviously, there's a concern on the feet. Um, Imovov is a better striker. But I just I like Allen's all-around game better. I like the way he's been fighting better, obviously, recently. Imovov hasn't super impressed me. I know he's, he's dangerous and dangerous on the feet, but uh, I think, I think Alan could be in here. I think Alan's worthy of uh, almost two times a payout here. If he hits. So give me i uh, I'm all in, not, not quite all in, but I'm in on Brendan Allen. So I, uh, I'm going to go with him above here, but I am also going to agree with you that I think the values on Brendan Allen's side, um, you know, I don't think this is a, a two to one kind of fight. Uh, I, I expected this to be in like the 130 ish range for Imovov, uh, which I'd be a lot more excited with because this is a fight where like, look, both guys kind of came into the UFC very one dimensional, right? Imovov, the striker, uh, who likes to snipe from the outside, Brendan Allen, the guy who wants to grind and get the rear naked choke. And both of them are still that, but like Brendan Allen's hands have come around a lot. And Imovov is like, you know, sort of developed his wrestling and takedown, uh, defense, <laughs> I'm going to go with Imovov just because, like, to your point, I was kind of settling on Imovov until that Jared Cannonier fight. And then yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. he's he's back to being the guy who I thought he was. And I think if he could do that to Cannonier, he could do it to Brendan Allen, too. Um, but I but I understand the, like, hesitation. I understand wondering, like, can Brendan Allen get him down and what can he do if he can? So, uh, yeah, it, it's not worth two to one for me. Uh, you know, I'm not getting in on Imovov at negative 210. That's going to have to come down a ways before I'm interested. But uh, Imovov is still my pick. And is a, can- a win over Cannoneer, that's not aging as well either. I don't know. Is it not aging well? Or did freaking yeah. my, my guy Kai Bohio just go in there and put a beat down <laughs> on a guy because he's Kai Bohio and maybe we need that's to true. start putting some respect on his name? That's res- put some respect on his name. All right. Disagreed there. So we've what? Uh, we've agreed on two. <laughs> two, two. Oh, wow. Unreal. Six on the whole card so far. <laughs> wow. Main event. I have a feeling we may agree, but who, who's to say? Uh, this is a lightweight fight. Hanado Moicano, Brazil, Benoit Saint Denis, France. He lost his way into a main event slot. So, um, all right. BSD and Moicano. We'll tell you about money Moicano first. Moicano actually is his nickname. That's not his real last name. Uh, he's 19, five and one, one knockout, 10 submissions. Been knocked out three times, submitted once. Uh, 11 to 5 in the UFC. He's won three straight and 5 of 6. Won his last fight via TKO. Uh, his last loss was March. When did he lose last? Why do I have March 5th written down? How dumb was I when I was doing this? Gumby, pretty dumb. Uh, he last lost March 2022. I put the date instead of the year. Uh, so it's a couple years. Uh, used to fight at Featherweight, 2010 Pro and made debut. 1 0 in Pro Grappling. Has outstruck his opponents in the UFC by 0.7 strikes per minute, plus 230. God of War, Saint Denis, going by the uh, English version of the nickname. A 13 2 with one no contest, four knockouts, nine submissions, finished everyone. He's been knocked out once. Last fight, Dustin Poirier. 5 and 2 in the UFC, 5 and 1 over his last six. Like I said, last fight, TK uh, knocked out. Uh, used to fight at welterweight and middleweight. 3-3 three three as a pro grappler, an inch of reach over Moicano, six years younger, more active landing strikes than Moicano. He's outstruck his UFC points by 0.72 strikes per minute, minus 275. A rarity, but you get to go first for the main event. The not want to say to me. Mm-hmm. I just think he does everything better than Hanato Moicano, right? Like, I think he's a better wrestler. Uh, I think his top control is better. You know, his submission game probably holds its own with Moicano. Um, and the fact that Moicano was going to have to use his whole submission game off his back is bad news for him. You know, I, I think when we watch Moicano just get pieced up by Jaywin Turner in that last fight, I mean, that that obviously gives me concerns about Moicano's chin and, uh, you know, his boxing. Because really, if, if Jaywin Turner just fouled up his strikes and instead of trying to walk off, Moicano is not in this fight. Jaywin Turner is, you know, and uh you know, that for me is is a red flag. I, I think St. Denis, obviously coming off the loss, is making his line a little lower and as a result making it maybe playable or at least, you know, good for a parlay for me. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like St. Denis here. I just think he's the better fighter in just about every way. 
as do i uh yeah and he's a monster and he's fighting at home yeah this sh- mokana's pretty wild himself this this could be a very very fun fight so very very good main event should be a fun saturday so yeah i agree on saint De- saint denis picks all right let's recap and we'll get you to our fancy plays benoit saint denis uh he's got him above i have alan he has we both have britu we both have battle we both no i have sherry he has a miranda that's a big one. If you hit that one, Gummy, plus 500. He has Frivola. I have a Zyam. So I already did the ad reads, right? Did I? Yes. I did the no, last you haven't. No, you haven't done the second set. Haven't told everyone yet? Well, let me tell you about people. Don't you run away yet. we got fancy plays coming up. i got to tell you about BetUS. We're brought to you by BetUS. Bet with the best in the business, BetUS. BetUS has been around for more than 30 years. You can easily deposit using cryptocurrency and get lightning fast payouts. Check out all their MMA lines there. Uh, and you can support SGPN and get yourself access to another great book by signing up at BetUS. Use our link to sign up and get a 125% deposit bonus on your first three deposits. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BetUS. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BetUS. Code SGPN. So they know that we sent you BetUS, America's favorite sports book. And we are brought to you by our proud partner, Rhythm. SGPN's proud partner, Rhythm, is the number one AI-powered sports betting platform that helps provide bettors of all levels the ability to build custom predictive betting models in seconds and get predictions for betting on money line spreads, totals, and props. Build your model, copy one of the top performing models from the leaderboard or press ability model for me. And Rhythm it gives you predictions for every game and player prop and also has a myriad of stats, research, and trend analysis to give you even more betting insights claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpockets.com slash rhythm at sportsgamblingpockets.com slash r-i-t-h-m-m disregard what my son said we are not all done we have more to do <laughs> um all right fancy plays locks dogs props parlays all that good stuff um whose turn my turn i think sure i mean i already have your picks written down oh okay perfect time. uh is brian battle my lock <laughs> yeah 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 good. Good. perfect all right brian um, battle's my I- lock uh, I'm going to take Joe Anderson Bree too. Uh, too. I think that line is uh, exploitable, uh, even if it's a little on the high side for what I usually yeah. use for a lock. But uh, yeah. yeah. All right. I don't have too many dogs now, do I? Um, I, I hope I hit all three of these. I'm going to go uh, nuts. Be, it would be good, though. Give me Brendan Allen, plus 180. Ah, I did not yeah, have, you that. have that. One. You didn't see, you didn't, you didn't think I was going to pick him, did you? Uh, no, I, I you thought you were sure? going to go uh, Ursulan. Uh, yeah. I thought you were going to go okay. with him. For your yeah, drive. I was. Uh, maybe I'm going with him in a second. So, oh, I did. Don't have that either. I guess I just had the lockdown. Uh, I'm going to go with the steamroller, Matt Fravola. He's okay. my uh, underdog here. Okay. Um, for my prop play, Ursulan TKO plus 165. Ooh. You can hear tom- yesterday's episode why uh, we like him. You said uh, 165? 165, yep. I like that one. I thought you were going to go with that uh, Ludovic Klein KO prop we talked about. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It wasn't uh, high enough. I, I like that. I get some plus money with my uh, with my fancy plays. Well, how's this for plus money? I'm going to take Ooh. Benoit Saint-Denis. Uh, okay. And I'm going to take Benoit Saint-Denis by submission. Uh, I think people sleep on how good his sub skills are. Uh, I also think we could be in a club and sub situation here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of top control time. Uh, him wear out Moicano plus 435 Ooh. on Benoit Saint Denis to win by submission. So uh, that's where I'm going to go with that one. Whew. Very nice. He's making up for his Bree 2 uh, lock, which is minus 275. Bree 2 and Battle are the locks. For Vola, you said, right? Steamroller. <laughs> Steamroller for Vola and Allen are the dogs. BSD via sub and Ursland via TKO are the fancy plays. Now, for the fanciest of all plays, Hunger Man Jong Superfan Parlay, a two fight parlay that Gumby is going to give us. That's going to get us a bunch of winners. I teased the first half of it right at the top of the show. I like uh, Matt Frivola inside the distance. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've seen Farah Zayim get submitted by Terrence McKinney. Uh, I think that's in play. Uh, plus, we know Frivola's got big hands. Uh, plus 350 for him to get a finish in any way, uh, which for me is definitely worth a play. And I'm going to go with Joe Anderson, Bree too. I'm going to take him by KO here. Um, while I think William Gomi is tough, I, I think Bree too is going to land one of those big bombs. He likes to swarm, uh, and I think there's a good chance he gets it. That's also plus 350. Oof. So if you put both of those 350s together, you're going to get plus 1925. Repeat for the folks at home. Uh, Frivola inside the distance yep. and Joe Anderson Bree 2 by KO. Bree 2 by KO. There you go. Plus 1900. Boom. All right. You're all set for this week in Paris. Uh, we're not all done, though. We'll be back tomorrow. We got that uh, contender series to get into your 
into your orifices. Uh, in the meantime, we shall be in the Discord, sportsgamblepodcast.com slash Discord. We shall be on YouTube, of course. You can hit us in the comments and make sure you subscribe. Thank you. Uh, we shall be on Twitter. Gumby runs our account at SGPN MMA. I'm Jeff Fox Writer. He's Gumby Vreeland. Jeff Fox Writer on Instagram. Enter my, now we give giving you all the winners in advance. Enter my free pick em contest on my Substack, moneymma.substack.com and win some stuff for free. Gumby, Top Turtle MMA Podcast. Fun week coming this week. Yeah, we got Ray Longo uh, talking about the Marab Duvalishvili win. And then we also got Leslie Hernandez. There you go. So check it, check it out. And of course, sportsgamblingpodcast.com, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash store, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon for extra content. Gummy, bid the people farewell just for a few hours. All right. I'm Dana Gubby Freeland. He's the Canadian Solomon Renfro, Jeff Fox. And we will see you tomorrow.